Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Venu. You're watching Israeli News Live. North Korea fires suspected short-range missiles there close to the U.S. aircraft carriers being reported by the independent uh, uh, newspaper.co.uk. And it's kind of odd that since they've been firing all these missiles and as much as President Trump has uh, spoken about the need for taking down North Korea, now we also have a report that the U.S. Uh, aircraft carriers, the two that were left there, the Carl Vinson and the Ronald Reagan, claim that they have finished their exercises with Japan and are leaving the region. Is it just too clo close for comfort? It's something that I've been wondering about. Uh, and is it the fact that the United States is more concerned that they would have to take on the Chinese military and the Russian military at the same time of dealing with Kim Jong-un, the North Korean leader? Or the fact that perhaps he just happens to have nuclear weapons, and it's one thing the U.S. has never had a history of, that is, taking on a nation that has a nuclear capability. At any rate, the U.S. has packed bags and left the region. Now, I don't think that's the case, of course, of South Korea and the U.S. military's presence there, or the B-1 bombers, and the THAAD system, by the way, the high-altitude defense system, is not going anywhere despite how much China is not very happy about this idea. Moving on also in other news, North Korea's ICBM test launch is not far away. We'll tackle the hostility policy of the U.S. according to state media reporting there inside of North Korea. In fact, on one of their state media television programs, they show a nuclear bomb going off and North Korean official our North Korean news agent uh, reporting that a third world war was very near at hand. So maybe President Trump is rethinking the situation with North Korea, very concerned about how big this could get out of control, especially along the lines of the fact that they're still dealing with Syria and where the U.S. really would like to take advantage of, and that's to topple President Bashar al-Assad, take out Iran, and even destroy Hezbollah inside of Lebanon before leaving this region of the world. And that also may drag Russia into the theater. But in that case, it wouldn't drag China in as well, only Russia, something the U.S. probably feels a little bit safer about uh, taking down Russia than they do China and Russia together. Clearly, the Bible says in Daniel's prophecy that tidings out of the east and out of the north trouble him, and he goes away to take away many. All right, so as we look here on this particular tweet here, this is a Russian MOD map shows Syrian army reach Iraqi border northeast of Tanf or Al Tanf. Next to the step is Al Bukamal, and a huge blow to U.S. Syria's agenda. And by the way, the picture that you can see on your screen right here, try to make it a little bit bigger for you so you understand what's really going on. These are the two generals, uh, Russian generals, who spoke recently about the U.S., as they call it, U.S.'s illegal occupation inside of southern Syria, setting up, as they stated, that were safe zones that were not authorized by neither the U.N. nor the Syrian government. And, and, of course, in this particular tweet here, they're also talking about, as you can see here on this map here, that the Iraqi, Iraqi and Syrian militaries met one another on the border just to the east of where U.S., British, and Free Syrian Army forces have been conducting operations inside of Syria. As you can see, the American flag on the map here are working together. Very troubling indeed without a doubt, but also for Syria, they seem to have a positive note that they were able to meet the Iraqi forces there on their own border there. Also, another very interesting thing we reported to you the other day, we saw the images here on Twitter and also on the internet there about uh, the use of the United States' use of phosphorus, white phosphorus munitions inside of Syria. And today, the New York Times has come out with an article, U.S.-led forces said to have used white phosphorus in Syria, and they tackle this question, and although one American military official spoke on the condition of anomaly there, he did not rule out the fact that the U.S. does possess the white phosphorus in the Syrian theater there, and the possibility that it could have been used. But as he also stated, U.S. policy has always been to use it only for a smoke screen, something we had mentioned here as well on Israeli News Live, but uh, not, to, not to rule out the possibility that it was actually used in 
uh, where ISIS stronghold inside of uh, uh, the Syrian country there. And of course, they're talking about uh, Raqqa and the fact that most of the ISIS uh, militants have fled for Del Azor province there in order to use them to fight against the Syrian uh, president, President Bashar al-Assad, which is another issue altogether that the U.S. may be colluding with ISIS members uh, in, inside the country. Very troubling things that we keep finding out. Another thing I wanted to bring to your attention here, another uh, new thing that came out today, uh, of course, this is where uh, Christian uh, Anamanpour, CNN's journalist, hands Foreign Minister Sergey Lavrov the picture of the famous picture of this young little boy here that uh, supposedly was injured in a Russian airstrike. The White Helmets rescued the little boy, ran him immediately to an ambulance, but rather than treating him for his uh, appear, apparent head injury, began to photograph him, which the photographs go viral. Now you can see also the picture beside him on your screen there. It's the same little boy uh, after the attack, and it just so happens to be that his parents uh, are pro-President Bashar al-Assad loyals, uh, family members that were part, I think the father was actually part of the Syrian army, uh, and they never were given permission of the White Helmets to use this little boy for this media propaganda. They said while they were rescuing some of their own families from the rubble there, that they rushed this boy off, and the next thing they know, his photos had been taken. Now, the father of this little boy also states, in fact, I think his mother as well, that this was never an air assault by the Russian or Syrian government. They said, in fact, they never heard any airplanes overhead, but they believed it to be some type of a bomb that went off or a ground mortar or something of that effect there that caused the collapse of the building. I thought it was rather interesting to see that. Also on the uh, Russian website there, this was brought up as well. And Christine, Christiane Anamanpour has been invited by RT News with them to help her to get in to re-interview the or to interview the family themselves to know the truth behind the story of this huge propaganda. And as they stated, it's funny how that CNN made sure that they could get in there to film uh, or to film other issues there, but when it comes to clearing up a propaganda lie, they seem to be avoiding that altogether. One other thing I wanted to bring out to your attention as well was Deuteron, the president of the Philippines, claims that uh, never, uh, he never, uh, never approached U.S. for help in a battle against Islamic State militants. It's almost as if the U.S. just happened to show up inside of his country to help battle the Islamic State which kind of makes you wonder, at least in my opinion here, how did the Islamic State even get started in the Philippines to begin with? We know that President Deuteron has been very much, especially during President Obama's time, very much critical of President Obama. Not as much with President Trump, but it just seems like that everywhere that there's problems in the world that some people in power don't like, the Islamic State happens to show up and destabilize nations. Of course, never fear, U.S. Special Forces will always be close at hand to help bring this under control. And that's nothing against our U.S. Special Forces, but sometimes I cannot help but wonder if the deep state does not manipulate the situations around the world and use good-hearted American people that do have a heart to want to help others for some agenda that they have that's a little bit deep, deeper rooted into evil. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget, if our broadcasts are a blessing to you, do support the work we do here. We can't do it without your help. IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate there. God bless you and show you.